I like to just use paper and uh, draw my squares on it, whether it's six on a full page, three on a half page. And, and there's nothing wrong with just using those to draw in. Now you guys, I think who have been around a while know that I'm also kind of spoiled because one of my preferences is cut corners, curved corners. And I can show you how I do that quite easily when I trim this paper. So I did trim some four by fours. And I thought maybe being nice and large would be best uh, for you guys to see clearly what I'm doing. But I'm gonna go ahead and cut. This is just a Fisker's cutter. Can't see the top of it, unfortunately, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut another four by four. But this, uh, if you have a cutter, it's lovely. If you don't, of course, measuring and using scissors is marvelous. And you can buy these things, but you know, usually when you buy them like cut to size, they're more expensive. There's no need to do that. So there's one with regular corners, correct? This is by Creative Memories. There are a gob of these things. You've seen this at least once before on these, but it really is that simple and you get your corner. I just like that. It's just my favorite thing. And that might be the influence of Zentangle because they mostly curve. So let me show you a few slow drawings and then start the one we're going to do today. This is one of the most recent ones and the slow drawing sometimes does use watercolor or markers. These happen to be with watercolor. And it's just piece by piece, repetitive, size doesn't matter. You can go medium, small, large, whatever you want to do. So I did just a couple of those one day, just to play. And then we're going to do something more like this where you're just using lines. And so here I've made basically a line that almost looks like a mountain from, the, from far away. And then when you take your lines and just keep being repetitive, this one to me became more bark-like, water-like. And again, you do not have to color these at all. Everything can stay. This one's a little bit bigger, so you just see a little more drama. And this one, I love this. It's just kind of, I guess I should go this way. Because <laughs> really what, to me, this looks like is on the East Coast with the breaks they put on big sand dunes. And then watering back down if I wanted it this way, I guess that could represent sky. But see, mindful drawing, slow drawing, is to take your time. There's no rush. That's a color. And what I really enjoy too are those itty bitty frames that have just a little clip on them. This one's fun. It almost looks like leaves, parts of leaves. And then here's the one we're going to do today, cobble. Now, one of the things Amy will say about mindful drawing is try not to think about a product at the end, but to enjoy the doing it, of the process. And then if at the end, you find, hey, if I color that a certain way, it'll look like a cobblestone path. Or if I color it that way, like I could see if I did this particular one and I wanted it to be something, you know, a sincere product, if you will, I could always make this be blues, meaning stream. This could be cobbles as in a path over the stream. This could be grass or dirt or leaves and weeds. So you can see here, I did actually start to do some coloring with a similar one. But let's, let's look at cobble. And I'm using Micron. I have an O1 and an O3. Not really much size difference in the two, but I'm gonna take the O3 because I'm gonna go kind of big so you guys can see it on screen. And this is a watercolor paper simply because I like the thickness. Some papers are smoother one side, rougher another. And you, know, you can also just use like I did on those others copy paper off your printer. And of course that can be purchased in different ways. If you don't want to use 18 or 20 by a little bit better, maybe 24, 26 pound paper. So get my handy dandy little micron ready. And for slow drawing, it really is to put your pen down, draw what looks like a cobble to you. And she actually calls it cobble on purpose, not cobblestone just to think we are carving or cobbling out, although we are sketching an interesting shape. It can be like this. You can also now, if you want to, come separate way out here. No right, no wrong, no rule, other than to enjoy and take your time. 
sometimes I try to stay equidistant, like between, you know, the same little path between them. Sometimes I'm not too concerned about that. And I try to do a variety of sizes. Try to think about it. if I were in nature and I were actually looking out at an area that had some rocks that reminded me of cobblestone. Or, I don't know, maybe some of you may be fortunate enough to live in an area that has some old cobblestone street. We have some old brick streets around here. We don't have any cobblestone. And I'm getting a little fast, so I'm going to move back over here and I'm going to slow down. Breathe in, just kind of relax. I want to mention that if you are fortunate enough to have some kind of sketchbook that you like to fill, slow drawing in a sketchbook is fun because Again, you can do this, just draw your square. You can even draw circles, whichever you like. And on the full page, or even just a half of the page, you can select one of the patterns whether it's a line pattern or cobble. Another one of my favorites, watch this. It's called rice. Now again, if tremor is interfering, make it a little bit bigger. Maybe your rice needs to be this big. I can draw a magnifying scope, right? You can be far away, you can be close, you can overlap, you can pretend like you can do whatever you want. But here's one thing I like to do with rice. I mean, not with rice, but what I'm doing is I get my shape started, and then I just touch one little section, and you can move your paper or your tile, if I can call it a tile. And then you get some fun shapes, some interesting patterns. And to me, one thing about slow drawing, it's like looking at clouds outdoors. Do you see something in it? Like right now, when I look at that, I can see here the face of a little porcupine. Yeah, looking at me, funny little hair. So that is slow drawing. And I'm gonna go ahead to the table of contents in this book since it did arrive and I have it to show you. Well, you, well, here on the cover, you can even see some of hers. But this is very similar to the one I was showing you that I learned from her, of course. But draw yourself from, oh, there's rice. Woohoo! Very. This is actually pieces, squares. Can you see the edges that she's put together to make a large drawing? So small art became big art. So here, see some of the first two I ever saw, fan and cobble. And this one is lovely. I love that. It's called exhale. So I imagine, of course, you inhale nose, exhale mouth, or inhale mouth, exhale nose. I like mouth, nose, nose, nose. But uh, it's really simple. Simple, simple, simple. But when you put them together, especially in a sketchbook, and perhaps you get your watercolors out or your pencils, um, you can just have a lot of fun with slow drawing. So I highly recommend if you are on Facebook, feel free to go to um, Mindful Art Studio. It's called the Mindful Art Studio. And so now we're going to move into something that I want you to be able to finish before we, we end today. But we're going to look at a couple of examples so we can pick what we want to do. Okay, well, you don't need to see my sketchbook, but I do want to show you. Here we go. This is one of my favorite Zen tangles. I get so caught up in the pattern and then when it's done it's like every time I think how did I do that 
And that's where Zentangle really during the process, it just puts a spark at the end, boy. And this is always fun because you have a hand, I hope you have one hand at least. You may use your foot. But here I've just used my hand. Now I went thicker on the outside with a Sharpie just because I wanted it to be quite pronounced. I did this just the other day. Hadn't done one in a while. But each pattern has a name. And what I did this time though, because we were combining slow drawing with Zentangle, uh, this one right here, this is actually a slow drawing pattern from Amy, as is this. And then what I've noticed in the last year or so, some of the Zentangle patterns are picking up very similarly uh, to what Amy does and, or uh, I think it's all just going full circle in that if you see a pattern and you see what I did on my thumb right here, yeah, that was fun. This is, of course, like a basket weave. So we're going to look at the basics of Zentangle, and then we are going to do whatever you want. Oh, and by the way, any of this art can be done on other colors of paper. I tend to use white or cream, but craft paper is a brown, and this is black paper. And you'll notice that this is somewhat similar uh, to that other one, not quite, but you're seeing I'm kind of using a pattern right there. And then this one, I was actually using a pink metallic or a kind of a rose colored metallic to do this one. So what are the steps in Zentangle? If you have a piece of paper where you can just draw some squares and they don't even have to be good squares. I mean, if you want to, you could just do this. Square, yeah, just kind of get an idea. And I'm going to show you the steps to the actual Zentangle. I've, I've done them on, I think, eight different cards because it tends to be an eight-step process. So here's step number one. Are you ready? And what I love about this, too, with Zentangle, the process is patterned so that you don't even have to think if you don't want to. In fact, there's a die with, I don't know, 12 sides on it and one list of 12 Zentangle patterns. So if you don't even wanna think or pick a pattern, roll the die, if eight pops up, you go to pattern number eight and that's the one you're gonna use. Roll the die again for the next one. Another pattern number, let's say three, again, that's the pattern you're gonna use. So here's step one. You take your paper and this is usually done in pencil. Pencil's used for a couple of things and then the marker will be used for everything else. And you just find four corners. Now, does it have to be exactly equidistant from the corners? No, that's the fun of, I'm gonna call it mindful drawing because that's gonna fit both slow drawing and Zentangle. But if I were using this, if this represented the first step, one, two, three, four. Typically I do it in pencil because if I wanna erase it later, I can, but often I don't. Here is step two. Now, I hope you can do this. Better pay attention. You ready? We connect the dots. <laughs> but here's what's fun about connecting the dots. Okay, so we have our dots. Sometimes you might be thinking, well, I need to be equidistant. Equidistant. Nope. Look at this. You notice that right there? You can squiggle it. You can do anything you want. You can be pretty straight. You get to decide. But you are now looking at like a mat around and then an inner area. Then there's two phrases they use. String and tangle. Okay. So a string is now going to give you your parameters, your boundaries, your limited, you know, framing your art. Now, interestingly, when you do Zentangle inspired art, the shape of your animal or the shape of my hand, that's the string, the equivalent of the string. And then you just like on the bird, you know, where I chose to make a line there and a line there and a line, you know, that's like mimicking the layers of the feathering down the neck the breast, the tail. On the seahorse, I've done it two ways. This seahorse, you can see I made four of these. I kind of patterned this like that. And then when I did this seahorse, I wanted something different. And so I 
did this separately, whereas, you know, this one I didn't. So you get to make your own little, I'm gonna say equivalent of strings, if you will. So here's an easy string, watch this. You just go back here, one, two, three. Voila, now I have one, two, three, four. I'm going to use four centangle patterns of my choosing. And all of these patterns have names. I rarely worry about the names. I wrote them down for you just in case. So the first pattern I chose to use was called floating discs. Let me show you how they do that one. Let me go back to my figure. Oh, I'll have to start another one. That'll work. So if I put in one, two, three, four, and I get my lines. And there's no rhyme or reason. Sometimes I just make a square. Sometimes I like to, I'm going to do this on the same. Okay, I'm going to make that the top. And then here we go. One, two, three. Okay, so floating discs. I'm putting it here. Step by step. I like to start where there's a nice big space so I can see what's happening with this path. So I am going to go out and back. Okay. I'm going to leave a little bit of space. Oh, that looks like half of a shark smile. Where's the teeth? Is it a shark teeth? No. Up and down. And up. And I'm one of those people that kind of talks to themselves. Then I have to kind of finish. Okay, if this goes here, I have to imagine where this one is. And sometimes when I want to do that, I will put it on paper. And I will say, well, this one is going to go from here to here. And it would go right. So then the next one is going to go here. And the next one is going to go here. Of course, now I've gotten under my edges, but that's okay. We won't work that way. What's next? We're going to have a solid piece in here. And sometimes this is where it's an advantage to have more than one or two pens because I can actually use a thicker pen to fill in this solid space. But I didn't bring any other pens but my one and my three. For sure, I'm using my one. Now let me color with the three. Well, I'm going to draw all of these. And I'm going to try to keep these somewhat in a shape that I like. I mean, in a, a curve that I like to go with that. You do whatever works for you because it's yours. And that isn't going to have this part of the pattern. So we'll color that. If you were using paint and wanted to, you could actually be painting this solid black instead of using your micron or whatever pen. You may be using a pencil right now to practice. You may be using a ballpoint or a gel pen. All is good. But even the way you choose to color, like I might go straight, 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 curve, straight. You can fill it in however you like. I think that's about all the solid I need. Let me take that out a little. I still don't like that now. You get to decide what you like. Okay, there we go. And then what you'll notice, it's just these lines. Okay, that's all you have to do next. So I'm actually going to go here again. If you want to, you can keep your line very, uh, similar, but then I, notice how I tend to follow the curve. What if I don't want to follow the curve? Because intent is one. Normally, this is a straighter pattern. So I'm going to just do one at a time. You can do that if you want to and keep coming. And it's going to be curved. So instead of being all these straight lines, it's going to be curved perfectly good. Not the pattern in its purest form. I just wanted to show you. I'm trying to equidistance these, but you know, it's all in your eyes. It's all in how you can do it. If you end up with something that has a bigger space, it's okay. If you end up with a smaller space, it's okay. Yeah. 
But now see, we're starting to show that I'm going to make more and more of it. Now we're starting to show a little more about the first pieces that we drew. This shape. This start falling back the side of the disc. I think we're looking at it from the side, not the top. Now in mindful drawing, slow drawing, I would try to do these very slowly and deliberately, very slowly and deliberately. With Zentangle, you can go at a speed that you're comfortable with. Now, one of the important things about both of these, slow drawing and Zentangle, and the reason I really appreciate them, is there's never a mistake. If you go, oh no, I made a mistake. You know, maybe, you, maybe you went over the line. Well, guess what? Maybe you can work that into your pattern and it's not a mistake at all, but you're gonna do this now. One, two, down. One, two, down. So if you're going to change your pattern now, one, two, down, one, two, down, have it down, then you probably, I would anyway, I'd be going up here. One, two, down, one, two, down, one, two, down. And I would go ahead and, you know, make it my pattern. So now I'm not doing floating discs. I'm doing Lorraine's version of floating discs because there are no errors. Love that mindset. I tend to be yeah, a wee bit particular about things. And I, you know, at my age, I'm trying to learn not to let that inhibit me or stop me from doing anything. You know, there is also a very practical reason, friends, for these four, four little dots. When you look at this, some people get this like, I don't know how to start. What do I do? I don't know what I want to draw. I don't know if I want to sketch. I don't know if I want to color. I don't know what I want to do. Well, to get over that, it's kind of like freezing for anybody that freezes when they walk. By starting with four dots, it's no longer a white piece of paper staring back at you. It's four dots. And so you get started. It's really fun. Okay. Now you, you might finish that, you might not finish that. Here is one of my favorites. I know I call it basket weave, but that's not their official name. They call it Kiko, but it kind of looks like basket weave to me. I don't know about you, but it's a, it's a series of four. I'm gonna do a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. You find whatever proportion works for the size disc uh, paper you're using, two by two, three by three, four by four. These are square though, they aren't. Um, Rectangle. You can do rectangles, what am I saying? You can do anything. But in pure, pure Zentangle is a square. And they're call, they call this a tile in Zentangle. And if you actually buy Zentangle tiles on the back, there's a line for you to put your name, to put the date that you did this. I mean, it's really kind of fun. And now we're going to go this way. We're going to have just a slight curve to it. Again, I'm keeping a little bit equidistant. Okay, back we go. And just by drawing these lovely lines, we're going to get a very fun pattern. I didn't quite make those touch, which would have been maybe better to touch, but maybe it's okay. Notice I get a little bit messier if I try to get too fast. And always, I have to admit, when I'm not working with you on screen, I tend to be much neater. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get these. <laughs> okay. So just in case, let's maybe do a little bit more here, just to give you the idea. But I'm sure you know I have a finished product when we get there. Now, any quilters? I don't know if any of you are quilters, but you're going to love this, I think. Doesn't that look familiar? Flying geese. I believe that that's a quilt pattern. may not look like this, but here's what we do. I love this curve, and I am actually going to follow it. This is a great place to put flying geese. So pick your distance. Like this one, what? Maybe that's three-eighths. I'm going to go a little bit bigger over here simply because my tile is bigger. 
and it's faster if you do it bigger. <laughs> so there's that. And then notice my other line is going to go this way. Okay. So flying geese, we're going from the bottom left of any of these. Well, it's not quite a square, this squarish shape to the top center and back to here. Now, sometimes you can just go one, two and be done with it. If you want more curve there, sometimes I prefer to start at the top center, come down to the corner, top center, come down to the corner. Now you can also go from the corner up and the corner up. You do what works for you. And then of course, where you don't have a full square-ish, uh, you're going to have to imagine where it would be. So I'm going to imagine it goes up and the rest of it's over here somewhere. So that's all I can do is up, up, up. So there it is plain. And you can leave it plain should you ever want to. You could perhaps fill this in with a shape. I like to go ahead and color it. Um, it's going to give me a little bit of, again, you can use uh, colored pencils, you can use watercolor. But I would say in its purest form, it tends to just all be colored with your marker. And again, these microns, as I'm sure you well know, or any other brand, they come in 01, 02, 03, 05, 08, 10, 12. And the larger ones do. Fairly in better, I think. Now, for time's sake, I think we're doing well. But when we finish this practice, I want to help you get started with something that you might finish on your own if you're interested. Now, you might be putting it in chat. If you want to see how to do it, like we could do a tulip, we could do your hand, we could do the seahorse, we could do maybe we could do anything you want. Well, it depends on what you ask me to do. <laughs> hey, there is nothing wrong. Let's say you want to do Zentangle in the shape of a butterfly. And you say to yourself, oh, man, I'm not very good at drawing butterflies. You know what? It is permissible if you need permission. It is delightful. It is perfectly okay to even like go into a magazine page. And if they've got a butterfly, or if you have a kid's coloring book or your own adult coloring book, or if you've got some kind of butterfly on a greeting card that you say, hey, cut out the butterfly, trace it, string it, and then these patterns are all called tangles, thus zen tangle. Now, you know, when you were a kid, what do we call it? Doodles, didn't you? Didn't you doodle on your notes in eighth grade math? <laughs> Eighth grade is when I started writing backwards. I loved anything by Leonardo da Vinci. And I loved architecture. And I loved patterns. And so I would kind of incorporate all of that if I could and doodle. Well, Zentangle, I guess you could say, is a grown up doodling or a fancy, I don't know what you want to call it, but it is what it is. And really, Maria, what's her last name? I mean, two people, Maria and somebody. Sorry, I can't remember at the moment. Thought about Zentangle, and I do have, I have to admit, I've loved Zentangle many years, and I have, I don't know, 12 books about Zentangle, maybe more. One of them is, of course, The Joy of Zentangle. Love it. Um, but there you get that pattern. Okay. And then another one of my favorites. Of course, I'm bringing you my favorites. That's that way I know how to do them. This is called Cadent and it has a variety. This one is with black circles. See, they're just black. Let me show you how we do those. But I'm gonna do them in this style, open circles, okay? Now I'm gonna come over here because that's kind of a nice line to get myself started. And I'm going to go here. Now I want that distance and that distance to be about the same. There, there, there. So I've made a line, okay? Now, I'm going to turn it this way so that I can come up from those. And I'm going to try to be equidistant. Please, if you want to and need to, you can get out a ruler. Makes it take longer and you want it to be more perfect, you go for it. 
I don't want to do that right now. You know, if these were going to be on an architectural plan for bolts and a steel beam, yeah, you probably better have that rule. <laughs> of course, everything's done on CAD now or whatever fancy computer software there is. Very, very few hand blueprints these days. That went up a little bit. You know, they say you're optimist if you go up, pessimist if you go down. Eh. I just go cattywampus. What's that mean? I know. Cattywampus is joy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these are going to be all of these intersections. How do we get the shape? It's a lazy S. So I'm just going to start right here in the center for you. And I never start where there's only half. I always start where there's a full path. So you start right here, you see? And you kind of go around and then cross over in the middle and around. And release the S. Oh, it looks like something on a Stradivarius violin, doesn't it? If I need a, one on the other side to make it be where the music, the sound comes out. Yeah, I'm proud of that. So you just take your pattern down. And I go to this side. And I get these done. Yeah, I was a little crooked, but you know, that's okay. There are hundreds and hundreds, I don't know, maybe thousands of patterns. People have made their own patterns. Rick, I think it's Maria and Rick. Pretty sure. And sometimes I do this a little neater than others. Now I'm gonna go up here. If I imagine that my, my circle would be right there, I'm gonna come right about there. You get that top part? Yeah, doesn't quite match. Work for That's good. This one should be about there, though. Over here, I'm not sure yet. And then here's how you go the other way. It's really unattractive like that. Maybe not unattractive, but it's not my favorite. But now, look what happens when you start doing this. I love the change. And this is where, in my mind, being purposeful, mindful, slow, you get to really enjoy the metamorphosis <laughs> of your drawing as you go through process. Now, Zentangle, true Zentangle, once you finish something, uses pencil to shadow, to give it some shading, to give it some dimension. And with some patterns, that's really critical. With other patterns, yeah, it's not absolutely necessary. But typically, it does make it look pretty nice. So there's our four segments. And that would be a true Zentangle. Here I did one a little differently. So I used this pattern, this pattern, this pattern. But this one, you guys remember, neurographic art. I go, you know, if we can combine slow drawing, mindful drawing with Zentangle, you know what? We can add neurographic art. You know, my brain's one of those without dopamine or not losing it. And here you can see the shading just a little bit and how that just kind of changes it. So I chat on this. There's some chat. Anybody have an opinion on what we want to do? Oh, goody. Lots of people say hello. Oh, Bob Kathy. Kathy's here from Rochester. Yay! Why don't we get a clean square and let me show you how to do this one. Is that okay, everybody? I guess. <laughs> you can't talk to me. All right, now this one's different because we don't do the pure Zentangle. We're not gonna do the four dots. We're not gonna do the border or outline. We're gonna call this frame map. We're not gonna do a string per se. We are gonna do a string, I should. And, but our, we're not really tangling with patterning. And of course, I don't have a big fat pen, but we're going to be able to do this. So we start right here. Here's one of the patterns. Let me show you. From here to there, that's one line. Okay. 
So let's make that one. What I like to do is kind of visualize this halfway down. And I just put a little dot right there. I'm gonna to try to get near that as I make this little ellipse or football shape. Then I'm gonna turn it over. And if I was that far, I'm gonna to try to be, you know, somewhat similar going back. And so I'm gonna go up. And there's that shape, okay? Now you can draw a line from here to there. And I will say some friends of mine, when I was showing them how to do this once, they liked afterward, they did it again and they preferred this center line first. It helped them then do these football shapes, if you will. Okay, so let's go inside. It tends to be a little bit easier for many people if we start inside. So what we're going to do is just start little and make that shape, this shape. What do we call that shape? It's almost like we were doing the paisley in the 60s. And how curved can we get the edge? It's bigger or smaller, it depends on your paper size. So I am going to get my shapes in. So I use this and here's what's nice. This line is really just giving me a reference. It's gonna end up being all colored. So, not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna go up, try to get near that line, come in, up. Notice how it's getting larger each time. That didn't get as close as I would like. It's okay, I can fix that when I move on. But I wanna get relatively close to this center line. If I am far apart, this is gonna be super fat. We don't want that to be too, too fat. So we keep going. Yeah. The inside of these is now limited by my pen, but the outside is not yet limited. Now, once we get about here, we need to start getting smaller again, obviously, because our space is smaller. And I do not know about you, and I do not know about left-handed people. But there's one direction making these that is far easier for me than the other direction. Okay, so there's this row, this row. Now, I'm sure you can tell, we're gonna to go to the outside. And you try to start where you were, okay? And I mean, you're not matching perfectly, but try to make about that size shape, and I like to kind of see where I am in the thought of, well, what's happening over here? Um, this side I already did, so that I can do somewhat akin. You know, I could have taken that to be a little bit bigger going out into this corner. Didn't quite get there, that's okay. And if one continuous line, this isn't your belly width, it is okay to go like this. Up. I want to get that nice shape on there. I want to come into here. Feel free to not do it in one continuous line if that at this stage is not comfortable. <laughs> okay. Now let's work with this half based on time. We have about 10 minutes and that's okay, but Let's work with this half, and it's going to be obviously the same over here. Only going to go the other direction. You're going to go this way, and you go that way. So what do we do? Well, believe it or not, it's this simple. You start shading. And if you have a fatter pen or pencil, or if you have uh, watercolor, acrylic paint, but what amazes me every time I make this, and sometimes I'm better than others. This is the first time I have tried it on a four before. And this does not have to be perfect because when I am over here and I start going that way, you know, let me come down here and show you. If I come right here and I get this one in and this one in, okay, 
and I'm, I'm coloring and I'm thinking, well, I have to be perfect on this side. No, because it's going to go to that side. So that is all right. Depending on the paper you are using, scratch as well uh, the marker size. But you might be able to, as I can, hear every stroke. I can hear those strokes. And I can go scribble. That sounds like one thing. And I can go one, two, three, four, five. You know, and just, I can also cross hatch. I can circle. But if I circle, I do want to come back over it plain because the circles will leave. At least my experience has been. And see right here, that maybe doesn't look the way I would like. Well, all you have to do is come back. And fix. Fix is not the right word. Change. <laughs> no right or wrong, so we're not fixing. But I can change this shape because I didn't quite get that arch I want right there. No mistakes. Modify as you so choose, knowing that it's your picture. And I actually want to make this come in a little. Yeah, no more. There we go. Yeah, I like that one. So slow drawing, lines, circles, shapes. Zentangle. She calls the, we would say doodles, but um, they are tangles. The Zen really does mean, you know, the mindful practice of Zen. So for physical activity, I think Pilates or yoga. For sketching, I think of mindfulness, relaxation. So it won't be relaxing if you think it has to be but also perfect. Now, what you'll notice is, I'm gonna finish this area and then show you the last step, just in case. And I know I'm not gonna finish one. This is a bigger picture. I'm not gonna finish the medium small. Okay, so if I get this much done, how do I make it look like this? What, what do we do here in the center? Two ways to do that. I'm gonna go back to a smaller pen, actually. So let me start up here, okay. You can just go one, two, three, if you just want to have three. So it'd be like a center, right, left. Or come down here where you can be able to see. You can go longer, not quite as long, not quite as long. You can do many of these. I recommend an odd number. Just Seems to be better to have seven, five, three. But if I wanted three in this big one, I can go one, two, three. And by throwing it at the end, so if I'm deliberate placement here and deliberate placement here, eh, okay. But if I'm deliberate here and go, wee, I get a nice smooth ending. So you might keep drawing, but I just remembered, how can I forget our joy break job? And we have like five minutes, I think. But the good news is today, because I knew I'd get so concentrating on these images, um, I kind of planted my joy break for fun. Have you guys seen the new Shell Silverstein postage stamps? Again, I'm a card writer. So right here, yes, yeah, see, I rigged it. Read a poem. But because of those Shell Silverstein stamps, with, it's the um, giving tree, you know, the green cover on the book with the kid with the apple. I went and got one of my Shell Silverstein poetry books. So you keep drawing and I'm gonna read you out. We have several, just, uh, I, mine says we have six more minutes. So don't know how accurate that is. Oh, here you go. 
put something in. You ready for some joy? Here we go. Draw a crazy picture, write a nutty poem, sing a mumbo gumbo song, whistle through your comb, do a loony goony dance across the kitchen floor, put something silly in the world that ain't been there before. <laughs> I think with our little joy breaks similarly. Oh, here we go. Sometimes I watch families like at a restaurant or when we're on vacation on the beach or what have you. And every member of the family is on a screen, you know, a device. I love this one. It's called Channels. Channel one's no fun. Channel two's just news. Channel three is hard to see. Channel four is just a bore. Channel five is all jive. Channel six needs to be fixed. Channel seven and eight, just old movies. That's a great. Channel nine's a waste of my time. Channel 10 is off. My child, wouldn't you like to talk? a while. <laughs> yeah. The little boy and the old man. And this reminds me of the giving tree. Said the little boy, sometimes I brought my spoon. Said the little old man, I do that too. The little boy whispered, I wet my pants. I do that too, left the old man. Said the little boy, I often cry. The old man nodded, so do I. But worst of all, said the boy, it seems grown-ups don't pay attention to me. And he felt the warmth of a wrinkled old hand. I know what you mean, says the little old man. Poem sickle. Yep, got time. If you add sickle to your pop, would he become a popsicle? Would a mop become a mopsicle? Would a cop become a copsicle? Would a chop become a chopsicle? Would a drop become a dropsicle? Would a hop become a hopsicle? I guess it's time to stop sickle. <gasps> or is it time sickle to stop sickle? Hey, sickle, I can't stop sickle. Oh, sickle, my sickle, will sickle, I sickle, half sickle, two sickles, talk sickle, like sickle, this sickle, forever sickle, a sickle. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Lorraine, for doing this for us as always. I'll say this too. One of my favorite things about these, what I'm going to call small art, the two by two, three by three, four by four, you know, you can take it anywhere. It's not like you have to take your journal. So you're going to go to like here, it would be like the cable company. <laughs> you're going to wait a while. <laughs> Or maybe a doctor's office, you're going to wait a while. It's just nice to doodle. So whether it's a mindful slow drawing or an actual Zentangle or Zentangle inspired art, it's just, it's rewarding. And I can't tell you how many flights I've taken where I'll Zentangle while I'm sitting on the plane. And typically one person at least is going to say something. Well, at the end of the flight, they get it. It's theirs. Mm -hmm.